Hello and welcome to Surveillance Report 19. We are almost on our five month anniversary of weekly news. It's pretty crazy, I flew. Um, today's report will give you the privacy and security news between July 12th and the 20th before our five month anniversary next week. Um, today's affiliates we are featuring is our own Amazon affiliate page. Check out our storefront in the description which has recommended privacy and security tools like webcam covers and privacy screen protectors for your computers and mobile devices. And especially check out our book recommendations on there from 1984 to The Art of Invisibility, fiction and nonfiction, all with fantastic information educating you on privacy and security in our modern day world. I handpicked those. Um, they're there because they're my favorite books to read and I recommend everyone listening to them read them as well. You will have big brain. Even if you don't like our storefront, consider bookmarking our link before you order anything on Amazon as an easy way to support our work at no cost to you. And no more chatter, today's report is pretty short compared to other weeks, so we'll extend each story just a tad, but even then it's still a pretty short week, so don't expect anything glorious today, but maybe next week. I don't know, depends on the news. As always, let's begin with company news. So, Twitter was the big hit. It was the highlight for sure this week. So some of the largest Twitter accounts were mysteriously hacked to share the never-ending annoying cryptocurrency scams. This affected Joe Biden, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, Uber, Apple, and many more large verified accounts. And frankly, it was all done for just $120,000. Like, really? Uh, sure, that's quite a bit of money, but I mean, these people are pretty smart who did this, and that's, that's likely something they could each make in about a year. <laughs> now they're being chased forever by the FBI. As for who's behind this and how it happened, it seems to be a l pretty large social engineering attack affecting Twitter employees who had access to internal tools to take control of verified accounts. <laughs> like, what? Who in their right minds at Twitter thought this was a good idea? Talk about leaving out the principle of least privilege. The second source in a description actually dives into lots of the different theories and um, some of the possibilities of who did this attack, and it does a good job of breaking down all the possible suspects. Um, it also kind of covers how this attack was performed, or most likely how it was performed. We don't really have a clear answer yet. Um, no matter what, uh, this seems like it was mostly an error on Twitter's end, and uh, they should be held very responsible for this, as it's clear an attack like this should not be possible at the level of ease it was accomplished. Major oof, and I hope you didn't send any money to this scam. If you did, well, now you know. Google is up next. They are being sued in San Jose, California. Woot woot, under a class action because a claim that they track you around the internet even after you opted out of data collection. Like, people didn't know that happened. Specifically, if you have a Google account, you can use a privacy setting called web and app activity to tell Google not to collect data about your searches and browsing, but unfortunately this doesn't necessarily stop everything, especially in relation to its mobile tracking. This reminds us of two things. One, opt out of what you can. Even if you use Google, there's no real loss or reason not to opt out in your My Activity page. However, the second thing you need to remember is this is just the surface level tracking and Google will find other ways to get your information. Most of those methods we are aware of, which is why we talk about all of this on our channel. It's all about educating you on these techniques. A great starting point if you kind of want to get familiar with some of that is our recent Android security and privacy guide since that relies on Google tracking. Um, I'll leave that for you to check out in the description and it'll give you a little bit more insight into this kind of tracking and how it's done and especially what to do about it. Zoom. <laughs> uh, we can't really go a week without Zoom being in the news at this point. Uh, the teleconferencing giant got hit next. <laughs> it's honestly almost comedic at this point. Researchers found a minor but easy to exploit flaw in Zoom. This could have easily allowed attackers to mimic an organization to trick employees and business partners through social engineering. This relied on Zoom's custom URL feature, which allows companies to create a custom URL within their subdomain. Because of improper account validation, any meeting ID could be launched using an organization's custom URL, even if a meeting was set up by a separate individual account. The main concern is through this, a larger attack relying on impersonating the company could lead to disastrous consequences of fraud. So you could impersonate some random company and be like, hey, I'm Google, I'm, I'm a representative for Google, tell me all your secrets so you can work with us here at Google, and you're not actually Google. 
Um, so it's mostly just a social engineering uh, fear that this would enable. Fortunately, uh, sticking your thumb up to prove you're a real person would not really prevent this issue with your, you know, sensitive webcam chats. Let's end companies with at least something that isn't super negative. Mozilla, the company behind Firefox, has published their VPN out of beta. This, uh, that's really it. Um, it uses the Molvad infrastructure with Mozilla's software. It's cool, <laughs> I guess. I don't know, Molvad's honestly nicer at this point, so I'm not sure how useful this is, but <laughs> go Mozilla. That's our job as privacy advocates, just cheer on Mozilla. Unless they screw up, I mean, hammer them good. Research is up next, and this week was pretty limited to just one thing, but it was pretty major, so listen up. Several zero-log VPNs have been exposed to show millions of logs about users. UFO VPN was the main highlight. This gets juicier, though, as uh, not only did UFO VPN keep logs when they promised they wouldn't, which is already pretty bad, but they said they secured the database, then five days later, <laughs> it was exposed a second time. On top of this, they said, quote, we don't collect any information for registering, quote, in this server, all the collected information is anonymous and only being used for analyzing the user's network performance, quote, so far, no information has been leaked. <laughs> oh, well, the data set begs to differ. It includes passwords in plain text, VPN session tokens, IP addresses of both user devices and the servers they used, connection timestamps, geotags, device and OS information, and URLs for domains of injected ads inside of free users' browsers. It's not super anonymous if you ask me. Now, for our VPN reviews, uh, <laughs> they will not be TechLore approved. Let's hope they try and admit guilt, though, and promise change and not play the IP vanish card of just dismissing the whole issue and act like nothing happened. Um, this was bad, and it'll go down in history as another service breaking their word of having no logs, along with IP vanish, hide my ass, and pure VPN. So, rip UFO VPN. That was all the research we had this week. Politics, though, was, I guess, also pretty light, to be honest. Uh, let's start with the US. U.S. Homeland Security has expressed concerns over the use of masks during COVID-19 as it makes it hard to utilize facial recognition. This is a huge write-up, and honestly, I really don't know why. That was pretty much the story. Uh, <laughs> this, there's not much context needed. COVID masks make facial recognition hard, and Homeland Security is not happy. That's the story. Over in the EU, who cares a little bit more about your privacy, they have attempted to restrict companies like Facebook from sending data back to the US. The complaint here is the privacy of European citizens could not be guaranteed if their data is being sent to the US, given the overwhelming evidence of widespread eavesdropping by the NSA, and the fact the US legal system only protects the rights of US citizens, not international ones. Well, this ruling has passed, and now it's being decided how things will actually work, as it's not a total halt on data transfers between the EU and the US, as there obviously needs to be some kind of communication. Uh, I think we're going to get a little bit more details on how this will all look as time goes on. I, I kind of see this as like the net neutrality ruling. It's not just going to make an immediate difference, but maybe over time we'll actually start seeing um, that open up some different things and different avenues that will, in this case, hopefully help us. Let's head into FOSS news, free and open source software. The first story could have really gone in companies, politics, or FOSS, to be frank, but this category was pretty empty, so I just put it in here. ProtonVPN has stood up against Hong Kong and, um, and their new laws, giving Hong Kong police the ability to put police in prison for sharing content online the government considers offensive, uh, an obvious increase in the surveillance of the government. Proton has decided to keep their servers in Hong Kong, assuming they are able to maintain their strong security standards, which are pretty good. This is noble, and I consider it a win, as it's one of the few companies to actually stand up to China. Take notes, Apple and Microsoft. Our next and final FOSS news is Riot, the largest client used for Matrix, the messaging protocol, has rebranded into Element. This has simplified their branding, changed the UI a little bit, not a whole lot, but a little bit, and made some under the hood improvements, especially with notifications on mobile. If you haven't, we do have a Matrix room we encourage you to join. Most people in there seem to be a fan of the redesign. If you've never used Matrix, it's free, open source, doesn't have any personal information requirements to register, not even an email, and it implements some of the best privacy and security practices in a federated fashion. So there's no central entity there to, um, I guess, 
both abuse your data or make any mistakes with your data, which is the main complaint with things like Signal. Last but not least, we got our misfits. Oh yes, and there's only one story. We're almost done, people. And it's a really short week. An Iranian hacking team, ITG18, has offered a behind the scenes look into their methods. Oh, <laughs> not, not purposefully though. Uh, this was found in a virtual private cloud server, which surprise was left exposed to a, to a misconfiguration. I guess the main surprise was that this is supposed to be like a hacking organization who doesn't make those kind of simple mistakes. Um, this had more than 40 gigabytes of data and it showed how their group functioned and how they attacked individuals. All their secrets were exposed. Lucky for you, it's nothing magical. They're not breaking any rules of cybersecurity or anything like that. The main takeaway for you is to utilize strong, unique passwords, 2FA, and review and limit access to third-party apps. Basic things that we always tell people to do here in our communities. This can get more complex though if you're running a hacking operation. And if that's you, don't take tips from ITG18. That was the news for the week, everybody. It was pretty straightforward, but nonetheless, we thank you for listening in, and hopefully there's a bit more next week, or less, if you like these shorter. If you like them longer, then, you know what? Watch this twice. Once again, bookmark our Amazon link before you make any Amazon purchase to help support our work, or better yet, look at our storefront and see if anything speaks to you. Um, I really do recommend everybody reads the privacy and security books listed out in the storefront. I mean, I, those have just completely changed the way that I personally view privacy and security, and I would hope that other people would like that similar experience. If you haven't already had it already, I think most people who've read lots of those books can attest that they are pretty great books. That's all I have to say today. I'll see everyone soon and have a great rest of your day. 